Hey there folks and welcome back for another video. I'm your host CDB or Chris and I thank you so much for joining us again today or if it's your first time, thanks so much. If you're just coming back after uh, seeing Chris, Chris's uh, video from Another Cut Above, thank you very much. I hope you uh, enjoy it. We'll get into that a little bit, but I don't want to belabor that point because it's been talked a lot about. Oh, let's talk about what we're going to use today. First, my favorite uh, super speed of all time, the Gillette Red Tip Super Speed, which I think is the heaviest, if I'm not mistaken. It is just my favorite. It's the best super speed ever made as far as I'm concerned. I really like it, my absolute favorite. The blade, I'll show you, is uh, Persona Med Prep. You can't really see the writing on it, but second use on this blade. We're going to be using uh, the Razor Rock pre shave Cube. We'll go ahead and start with that right now. And you're gonna see a soap that you have not seen for a long time on this channel. And again, we'll get into it. It is, what is the mystery soap that you haven't seen? PAA folks, uh, CAD. CAD meaning cease and desist. If you remember years and years ago when they first came out with a soap called Barber Pole, the barber saw people sent them a cease and desist. This is a beautiful barbershop scent. It is one of my favorite barbershop scents. I have missed it. Uh, the price on this, I wrote it down, $14.95, 3.73 is the PPO, $3.73 an ounce. Very fair price. I believe it's four ounces if I'm not mistaken. I don't see it on here, but I'm sure it's on here somewhere, four ounces. Anyway, beautiful scent strength. I would call it a solid 7 to 7.5. And uh, we're going to be using the Envy Shave 8 Ball uh, Brush, which is a beautiful product that Nathan Clark puts out, or Envy Shave, excuse me. And he, he and Peter Wolf had these knots before they were widely available. I am uh, actually loading from the puck, and you know, I normally don't do this, but you know, things have changed. I want to try to use these products as the artisans intend. And so I think PAA recommends, you know, loading on the puck. So we're going to give it a go and then roll into a, a face lather. So we got our pre-shave on. Let's just wet that down a little bit here. And then we'll go into a lather. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, PAA gracing the den uh, once again. I, I love this soap, by the way. Now, I'm sure this soap is a different formula from the last time I used PAA but the scent is terrific. I'm putting it on my face and it, it's just so fragrant. I love it. I need to add some water to my brush, excuse me. Just dipping my brush there a little bit, adding some water. Anyway, so what I wanna talk to you about, folks, today, in addition to this wonderful shape, oh, fragrant. <laughs> I'm liking that a lot. Um, what is important to me and the channel right now is providing value for the community, all right? That is the viewers and, and the people who participate in this hobby and those who might stumble their way into it and find one of these videos. So it's really important to me that I'm talking about things that are actually of value. Things that aren't really of value are if you're upset with a vendor because of some relationship they have with another vendor and things didn't work out. That's not a value to the community. It just isn't. Due to some perceived slight, that's really not a value to the overall community. If, if you know, you've had some perceived slight or somebody hasn't treated someone that you might really like in a way you think is proper, it's okay to stand up for those people. But is excluding those vendors for all time, uh, a benefit to the entire community. And now, that said, I'm not suggesting that PAA did this. I wanna make that very clear. What I'm trying to get across is clicks, the clicks in the hobby, and there are clicks, it's, it's unmistakable. People who like certain brands and they automatically don't like other brands because they're not affiliated with this brand. There are artisans who are allied with other artisans and so on and so forth, and they exclude other artisans. It, it happens. I'm not interested in that. 
I'm just not interested in it. There was a time where obviously I was and, and those perceived slights and, and wrongdoings and so on that really didn't affect customers, I took into consideration, all right? And so as a result, we excluded certain brands. Again, I'm not speaking specifically of PAA here, all right? I'm just not interested in that anymore. I'm interested in a clean slate because I'm asking people to return to the channel here and see if the content is more to your liking because I'm actually enjoying myself. And so if I'm not willing to do the same thing myself in trying products and giving my view on products, that's what's of value to the community, in my opinion. Me using a product and giving my opinion. That's why most people come based on what I'm hearing from the viewers. Keep in mind, a lot of this, what I'm talking about, is strictly based on feedback that I've got in talking to people. And Chris Madden being one of them, and he had some very fair points in his video where he, where he talked about, for example, the IMCDB thing, um, where I used to say, I am CDB and you're not. I don't think people understood that was a, that was sort of a tribute, I guess, if you will, to Chevy Chase, who used to have that same bit on Saturday Night Live back in the 70s. And I never really thought that it would be taken offensively, but numerous people in the last few weeks since I've been comic, not numerous, you know, five or six have told me that they didn't care for that. They thought it was off-putting, but that was never my intent. So sometimes you can just flat send the wrong message unintentionally. Now, there are other times Whereas I'm ranting and talking about politics and people weren't coming here by and large for that material. So I started making shaving videos and people came for that material. And then I started talking about politics and, and a lot of people were not happy with that because that's not why they came to the channel. All right. It's like, it's the same as if you, uh, if you have an actor that you're really, really like a lot. And then all of a sudden you see that there's constantly spouting off about politics. It kind of turns you off. And to be very frank, it turns me off too. So when I put myself in that position or try to look at myself from a different perspective, it makes sense why people would not enjoy that. That's not why they're coming here. Now, some did appreciate it, don't get me wrong. But what was the purpose of the channel? The purpose of the channel was to advocate for the hobby and to create awareness and to keep it going and to just have fun with these products. And so if something is not hitting that, or if it's not in the interest of that, then it's really not worth pursuing. And this is why uh, I've taken the, the stance that, look, clean slate, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm not concerned about Artisan X, beautiful shave, by the way. I love this uh, Gillette Super Speed. I'm not concerned about Artisan X that was squabbling with Artisan Y. I'm just not it is not a concern of mine anymore. It does not advance the cause of advocating for this hobby. It doesn't help the viewers that Artisan X doesn't like Artisan Y. I am just not interested in it. I've been down that road. And it's, let me speak from experience when I say it doesn't really serve much a point to get all in up, up in the arms over vendor squabbling. It just doesn't. And so I'm just not interested in that. I'm interested in using these products, talking about them, giving my views. Now, if a product is bad, I'm going to say that I don't like it. Or if a product, product is good, I'm going to say it's good. That's all fair. Criticism that is based around the performance of the products is entirely fair. But all this stuff where people are upset with vendor X because of vendor Y, I am just not interested in it. And so I wanted to make that very clear. And if you watch Chris Madden's uh, video, he got into a number of points this morning and basically saying that, he, you know, the channel just wasn't very friendly and inviting and he was right. Because as I look back on it, it wasn't. And so I'm in total agreement with Chris. So thank you, Chris, for pointing that out. Thank you for, you know, mentioning the channel to the viewers and so on and so forth. I really appreciate it. Okay, enough of that. We are really having a good shave. The 
The quality of the soap is quite good. Now, I know this isn't their Cadillac formula, the CK6 or whatever it is. But this, I guess this is the Kokum. I don't know. I forgot to show you the ingredients at the at the beginning, so let's give them to you now. Anyway, this soap is performing very, very well. I got loads. Of, <laughs> I got loads of lather in this brush. The razor is gliding smoothly and effortlessly, and that's exactly what you want. So, if the CK6 formula of PAA is is uh, great, what is this? Because this is pretty good, you know? And that's kind of the thing. And again, I'm not going to suppress my views on reformulations and costs. Granted, you're going to see soaps on the channel that are that are north of what I would like to pay just because that's what people have asked for, viewers. But I'm not changing my view. You know, don't get me wrong. But I do want to bring things that are of a value. So there are budget-minded shavers out there. I want to make sure that there's a voice out there for budget shavers. I also want to make sure that, that products that are great get their due, regardless of cost. Now, normally, what I left up to my own devices... Would I spend $5 plus for an ounce? Generally, no. But you'll see some of those on the channel and you can make your own decision. I'm not trying to sway you one way or the other, but I do want to make sure that the budget-minded shavers have a place to come and go, hey, this stuff is, is great. This stuff is $3.73 an ounce and it's performing terrific in a terrific fashion. So, if the CK6 is many, many times better, I don't know. You know, if it is, it's out of this world. Because this is really leaving me wanting for nothing, and the scent strength is on point. So let's be very clear about that. You're going to be seeing other brands you haven't seen for a while here. So I hope you will enjoy that. And I hope you will enjoy the, the focus being around what's of benefit to the overall community. What's fun? What moves the needle on advancing this hobby? That's what I'm interested in. I'm not interested in brand zealotry. I'm not interested in squabbling, you know, again. I'm interested in doing this right here, having fun, having a fantastic shape, enjoying the scent. And by the way, I watched a podcast, um, Razor and Burn podcast, um, new. Uh, there's a, there's a, a channel for it on YouTube. And one of the soap makers, Zingari, which I haven't tried before, you know, talked uh, quite a bit at depth about soap making, which is pretty interesting. They got into aftershaves at the end, and I wasn't really digging some of that aftershave talk because they were like, you know, against alcohol-based aftershaves. And they were given their perspective, and they're entitled to it, just as I'm entitled to say, I love alcohol-based aftershaves. I'm going to always love them. It works for me. But anyway, the, you know... I think they were of a different mindset when it comes to alcohol-based aftershaves. I disagree. That sort of disagreement is fair play. But when you get into all the zealotry and, you know, I'm never buying from that brand, band, brand again, because they, they uh, dissed my alcohol-based aftershaves. No, I'm not taking that stance. I will try Zingari, Zingari Man, is it? Soaps. And if the other gentleman you know, produces a product, I'll try that stuff too. I'm not upset that they have a, a difference of opinion. So that is fair play. I think that's a good discussion, actually. But I hope that, you know, when we have these discussions, they're just being held in a positive way with the overall benefit to the community in mind. That's my goal and focus. Um, ag advocacy for the hobby and enjoying these terrific products. That's what I want to do. I don't want to talk about politics inside of shaving or outside of shaving. I want to stick to this sort of stuff, trying these products, letting you know what I think. And I hope you will appreciate that because I am enjoying it far more than I was when I was talking about other things. So it's been really positive for me. And thank you very much, Chris, again, from another cut above. Go check out his channel. If you haven't, it's very, very good. All right, let me rinse the face. Stand by, I'll be right back. And all right, we are back with the magic made by Witches Thayers. And by the way, I had to <laughs> wash my face a good while to get that residual slickness off. So that good quality soap. 
When it takes a while to get that residual slickness, that thin sheen on your face off after the shave, you know that that shaving soap is doing what it's supposed to do in the providing that bear, uh, that layer, I should say, or barrier that protects you from that uh, blade. Okay, let us do a quick review of what we used today. PAA, CAD, it's still terrific. The quality of this, and I don't know if it's been changed since the last time I've used it, but it seems to me better uh, than it was at that time. I don't know what version this is relative to what I had last, but it, it's very good. It provided a good uh, a good quality shave in all aspects. Obviously, I can't speak to the post, but in terms of performance, it was very, very good. No problems whatsoever. The Gillette Super Speed Red Tip Legendary. It is a terrific razor. Um, if you've never used one and you, you like Super Speeds, I think you'll love the Red Tip. They'll, they're a little bit harder to come by and more expensive than your standard super speed but if you can get one at a decent price it's in good shape it's worth trying i feel we use the envy shave eight ball which is a terrific synthetic brush by custom brush maker uh, nathan clark terrific and we're going to finish off today with italian barber um american barber which smells a lot like cad in my opinion their uh, aftershave prices are terrific at, at uh, Italian Barber. And I really like, for me, my use case, I like these simple aftershaves that don't have a lot of extra stuff in it. I like the alcohol. That's just me. And I realize it's not for everybody, but I love it. And part of that is probably just tradition, routine. But they smell great. I, I love to enjoy that scent. If there was no scent in these products, I would not enjoy wet shaving nearly as much as I do. Scent is is very important to me, both in aftershaves and soap. And so anyway, I've, I've uh, blabbered on enough today. I want to thank you once again for joining. I want to thank you very much for coming back after a long hiatus from watching the channel. Until next time, I thank you. Hope to see you again. I've been your host, CDB, and I'm saying God bless.